So in this video, I want to derive the formula for uh, recombination and generation, which is assisted uh, by the presence uh, of uh, traps. And you know, many times it's, it's the dominant uh, recombination and generation mechanism, especially for uh, indirect uh, band gap uh, semiconductors. And we'll derive this formula in this video. But before we do that, some, some historical background uh, is, uh, is, I'll give some historical background first. So this formula was derived by uh, Shockley, uh, Reed, and Hall uh, in the year uh, 19, around you know, 1952. And uh, Shockley and uh, Reed, they used to work uh, at uh, uh, Bell Laboratories and you know, they, they derived a very good uh, theoretical uh, formulation of uh, this, uh, this formula which they published uh, in uh, Physical Review in uh, 1952. And it's, you know, one of, the, uh, one of the very widely cited articles in the field of semiconductor. It has, uh, you know, somewhere more than uh, 3000 uh, citations. And uh, what they did was, you know, they were, they did a, they presented a very good uh, theoretical, uh, 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 you know, theoretical treatment of uh, this uh, recombination of uh, holes and electrons. And, you know, shown here is uh, one of the figures uh, from that paper, in fact, the very first figure. And it talks about, you know, the different uh, ways in which uh, the electrons and holes in a semiconductor can interact with each other. Uh, in the presence of traps. So, you know, for example, you have an electron, it can get uh, trapped into, you know, one of these trap states, and then it can get emitted back. Then if an electron is present in one of the trap states, it can uh, capture uh, one of the holes, or in other way, this electron can go back into this uh, valence band. And, you know, or, uh, or alternatively, you know, a hole uh, can emit back from uh, from this tape. So you know there's this four mechanism which which we're using which you know you can uh, these electrons and holes can interact uh, using a trap. And they published this in in you know this article came out uh, in in September of uh, 1952. At a, you know at a similar time and you know at a slightly uh, uh, earlier date this paper uh, uh, from uh, Robert Hall who used to work uh, at uh, GE laboratory at that time, he, all, he came up with this paper and Mr. Robert Hall is, you know, one of, uh, he's also credited for the invention of semiconductor lasers. So he's famous in another context. And he was studying at, you know, he was looking at uh, recom, he was looking at uh, lifetime and recombination generation in, uh, in PN diodes at that time. And he, you know, he came up with this, uh, uh, this formula where he was looking at essentially, you know, lifetime of uh, careers in P-type and N-type uh, dope semiconductor and looking at the data, he came up with this uh, formalism where, you know, he said this rate of recombination generation, it seems to be following uh, this formula. And in fact, you know, both of these uh, people uh, uh, were, you know, they cited each other's research because even though, you know, the papers came out at the same time, uh, at the same, you know, you know, even at those days, it used to take quite a while before you come up with something and before you get it published. So there was a, you know, time lag uh, during which people met in conferences and exchanged ideas. So both of them, you know, know, knew about each other's work and both of these papers cite each other's work. But, you know, some, 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 some people who know you, who, who, who like Shockley, they call this formula as uh, SRH uh, formula. And, you know, some people, since uh, Shockley was uh, such a polarizing figure, or, you know, some people might like Robert Hall better. So they call it uh, H uh, uh, SR formula, giving credit to Hall for deriving this first. So, but anyway, you know, the more more common and prevalent name is Shockley, and I have, you know, I, I, I like Shockley. So, you know, I'll, I'll use, uh, I'll call it uh, SRH uh, formula. And, uh, and you know, it, let's look at you know different uh, things which can happen, uh, different mechanisms by which these electrons and holes can interact with each other with the help of a trap. So let's say I have a trap, you know, which is located over here, and it's you know located at an energy level E T, which is somewhere between my conduction and valence band. So the various ways you know the this trap can uh, now you know affect uh, the recombination and generation is you know an electron could now essentially get captured in this trap and I'll call that process as R1. 
and then you know immediately when it's captured you know it will say you know oh i don't you know i don't like i like being free and being in the conduction man so you know let me go back and so it can get emitted back into the conduction man and let me call this process r2 now when when a elect when an electron is trapped you know it can what it can do is you know a hole can get captured into this trap as well and then you know electron and hole have uh, combined so a hole can go in and get uh, trapped uh, over here at the same time you know if if you have a hole in your in your trap state it can also you know think like you know i prefer being uh, in the valence band i don't like being trapped so you know a hole can go back uh, a hole which is trapped uh, in my trap state can go back uh, to the valence band so usually you know we we like to denote uh, these things in you know in terms of uh, just uh, one carrier so instead of instead of uh, writing uh, this uh, hole i just you know denote uh, everything uh, using electrons so instead of a hole being captured over here i can say you know it's it's equivalent to this electrons going into the valence band so and i call that process r3 and similarly this process which is uh, uh, which is you know a hole being emitted i call that equivalent to being an electron in the valence band being captured over here and i call that process r4 just you know make everything in terms of one carrier only so so now you know now 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 let's look at you know what the dependencies of these uh, different rates would be so you know let's look at this very first process r1 which is a uh, electron being captured into one of my trap state so it would depend of course on how many electrons i have so it will uh, depends upon the number of electrons i have and it would depend upon how many empty trap states i have so for the trap state i'll i can assume you know that they have uh, a probability of occupation of uh, say ft and this uh, ft if you know if if my semiconductor is in equilibrium it would be given by fermi dirac statistics so in that case this ft is uh, one given by the fermi dirac statistics and it's uh, given by this formula which depends upon how far my uh, trap level is from my uh, from my fermi level by by this formula right so assuming you know my probability of occupation of the trap is this then the number of trap states that would be empty would be essentially given by nt into 1 minus ft and so it's proportional to this and you know it, it's the proportionality constant which essentially it would depend upon the thermal velocity of uh, of my electrons and their capture cross section right so it depends upon you know what what velocity they're moving around and then what is the capture cross section of each of these traps to trap my electrons so the uh, reverse process of this that is you know electrons come here and now you know it doesn't like it so it, it wants to get emitted so this other process would i can imagine you know it it would depend upon how many how many tra how many electrons are already present uh, in this uh, trap level so i can write those as essentially you know number of trap levels which are occupied and i can multiply it uh, you know this proportionality factor i can represent it by you know emission coefficient so now using a similar formalism i can uh, relate the uh, rate of these other two processes which involve uh, hole capture and uh, hole emission and so i can write down the process uh, r3 and the rate for process r3 which involves uh, a capture of holes and you know i can relate again you know similar to what i did for r1 so it would be proportional to the total number of holes i have and then it would be proportional to you know how many of these how many of these trap states uh, are uh, occupied so it would be proportional to ntft and it would be proportional to the thermal velocity of uh, holes and the capture cross section of holes similar to you know just similar to what i did for electron capture similarly a hole emission would be again uh, proportional to uh, proportional to the 
to the emission coefficient for holes and at the same time it would depend upon how many of these trap states are empty so it would be dependent on nt into 1 minus uh, ft so now what i need to do is you know i i need to evaluate these things in the case when i have thermal equilibrium so what thermal equilibrium means is that uh, uh, first of all I, I have equilibrium so i can use uh, uh, i can uh, use uh, this uh, fermi dirac uh, statistics also you know the rate uh, the net rate of uh, these two uh, uh, processes should be balanced so you know or you know my overall uh, concentration is uh, is you know constant so this process is and it's not uh, changing so you know what i get in the case of thermal equilibrium what i should have is my r1 should be equal to r2 at the same time my r3 which is my uh, rate of uh, captures of holes should be equal to the rate of cap of emission of holes so let's you know equate r1 equal to r2 which so let me you know take these equations from here so you know you're assured that it's the same equation so i'll take r1 and this is uh, r1 and i'll take r2 uh, from here and you know then equate these two to each other so I need to equate R1 equal to R2 and I'm you know I'm saying R1 is this and R2 is this and they must be equal to each other and see now I see some terms cancelling out so you know NT will cancel out NT um, I want to relate my emission coefficient in terms of my capture coefficient so I want to for derive this formula for EN so what I see is it's, it's multiplying by FT so I can divide this whole thing by FT so I divide this by FT. So this again, I get one by FT minus one. And FT has this formula where, you know, FT is given by this for me, Dirac statistics. So one over FT would be one plus this exponential. So uh, what this term will reduce to is essentially, it will reduce to um, exponent of ET minus EF by KT. And I can, you know, I, I, I can see that my my emission coefficient, it's related to my um, to my capture cross section and it's related to, to my uh, it's related to the number of electrons. And I can write down this N in terms of my intrinsic carrier density. So instead of this N, I can write this as EXP and I can relate this to be, you know, related to my uh, uh, related to my uh, related to my Fermi level and my intrinsic uh, energy and I can do that so I can see you know that my formula is almost emerging for my emission coefficient so what I get is my emission coefficient it's proportional to the thermal velocity of electrons into the capture cross-section of electrons and multiplied by you know this Ni times these two exponents will add up so you know ef will go away and what i left with is proportional to exp et minus ei by kt and you know i can do i related r1 equal to r2 i can do the same thing where i'll relate you know the process related to uh, capture and emissions of holes and i'll get a you know a similar formula for uh, emission uh, coefficient of holes which says you know it, it's proportional again to the capture coefficient uh, of holes multiplied by uh, this ni and the only difference would be instead of et minus ei i get a term which is ei minus et by kt so what i have done is you know uh, using thermal in thermal in the case of thermal equilibrium i have derived these uh, uh, relationship which relate my emission uh, coefficient to my capture cross section both for electrons and holes